The story of fashions is largely a story of design, and here in St. Louis, we look in on a couple of the designers who tell that story. They work for a dress manufacturing company that maintains five separate and distinct design departments, one for each of the five lines of dresses the firm turns out. For much too long, American design was strongly, almost entirely, guided by the arbitrary decisions of a handful of Parisians who operated with little knowledge of or concern for basic American tastes. That situation is changing fast. Recent drastic edicts from across the Atlantic have been generally ignored. And part of the reason for that is the existence of a large core of skillful domestic fashion designers, like those at Forest City Manufacturing Company, who are much more in step with the requirements of their countrywomen. Transforming the new creation into a mass-produced and consequently a reasonably priced piece of wearing apparel is a process involving many operations, many skills. For example, there's the pattern maker who dissects the dress into its various components and makes first a muslin, then a paper reproduction of each of them. The patterns go on to the cutter, whose sharp, fast-moving blade cuts the same design in many layers of fabric simultaneously. Sewers, known in the trade as operators, now assemble all the different parts. One adds ruffles or flounces, another puts on the sleeves, still another takes care of yokes, collars or gores. The same principles of interchangeability of parts and specialization of skills that give us our modern automobiles and the other products of industry work just the same in the needle trades. In dress shops and department stores anywhere in the country, as here at Sticks, Bayer and Fuller's, women of all ages, all sizes and all tastes can buy the clothes they want for a fraction of what equally high-styled garments would cost them in Paris or at the salon of a New York custom clothier. There's no longer such a thing, really, as a New York look or a Chicago look or a Houston or Hollywood look. Today, thanks to the development of a truly national school of design and improved industrial techniques, you'd never be able to distinguish by her dress Miss Iowa from Miss Rhode Island or Miss Idaho from Miss Arkansas. To keep this new trend moving and developing, firms like Forest City provide college scholarships for young people who show interest and promise in the field of fashion design. Here at the School of Fine Arts of Washington University, four students at a time are financed by the St. Louis Company in their studies of that engrossing subject, the attirement of the human form. Looking over their shoulders, we'd say the American School of Fashions has nothing to fear from foreign competition.